The main idea of improvement was to make the scissor table more smooth. Less friction, rigid, simple and still maintain the blue wheels. Also, it should travel more height. The transport block which travels up and down the threaded rod needed to be more efficient, so I made it wider. That gave me a better placement but also makes the whole scissor table wider. That meant I had to remade the most parts. I wasn't sure if the project will be successful, so I recycled most parts of the old build and just made them better. The main priority was the transport block. I want it to be strong, precise and whatnot. It's actually the part that is very important in general. I'm not just emphasizing on it. With this block the project rise and falls. This was mainly a test if I can get something practical out of my ideas. I always tried to use stuff that was laying around. So I used three sheets of fine birch plywood glued together. But for the final build I would use one solid piece of thick hard wood. Here you can watch me drilling the various holes of the transport block. The first holes are to fit the flange nuts on the sides. For no interference I actually drilled deeper than the whole flange nut. So the bolt that will get screwed has enough room. The 20mm hole in the middle is for the rod. Actually would be more clever to make it 25mm. So the grease of the rod wouldn't restrain by it. I mean the footage is quite self explanatory. I wanted to use typical standard thread. Because I had it laying around. For my first try I made a flange nut. I took a piece of 5mm round sheet metal laser cut. Then I perforated it till satisfactory and afterwards I clamped everything in this wire contraption to have the easiest angle to weld everything together. Yeah, here you can watch me assemble the transport block for the first time. After the rod insertion I could put the flange nut in place to screw it on. After the build was almost finished I tested it and it was awful tough to crank the squeaky boy up. I still don't understand the issue quite well. The threaded rod was already bent like a banana. I also forgot to install the radial bearing. What could be possible a reason for the tough cranking but also a serious indicator for the squeaky noise the cranking made. Wood and metal contact. I was pretty bummed out and I didn't want to buy another banana rod. I wanted beef, precision and thick tooling. So I ordered trapezoidal threaded rod and components. And this made a huge difference. In terms of efficiency, trapezoidal components are made for high axial forces and that is what we are dealing with. Axial forces along the rod. The thread is thick, strong and buff. No issue for the rod. Smooth like butter. Yeah, baby. So the transport block got this super beefy flange nut, machined of cast iron. Beautiful, elegant, strong appearance. Made the transport block geared up for heavy loads. And this is what we did. I loaded the scissor table with my brasa. My brasa weighs 130 pounds. It's a bit hard to get the scissor lift from the lowest position, but if you're over it, it gets pretty good. The drilling machine weighs a bit less than my brasa. It's about 30 kg, more or less, maybe more. I wish the lifting table would be more compact, because now it's almost as big as the room. I also want to mention I secured the screws of the pulling block with some sort of Loctite. In this clip it is clearly to grasp that the scissor table has problems to lift in the beginning. It moves a bit and suddenly pops up. To a height of approximately 36.5 cm equals 14 inches, the scissor table collapses a good amount. In this low position and almost flat position it is hard to get fairly heavy weight up. In this low position the scissor table has almost no strength. Everything from 43 cm, what equals 17 inches and above is easy to lift. I still don't understand the issue quite well. 
I think because I used spruce for the scissors, it's too bendy. I should have used hardwood instead of lightwood. I guess the leverage on the scissor legs is very high in such flat position.